Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Linode, my favorite web hosting company. They have price points that are going to be effective for pretty much everybody, from small business to single developers to large Fortune 500s. And if you're trying to do anything that runs on Linux, it's going to work on Linode. So you have all kinds of different options for your flavor of Linux. This is the largest privately held cloud hosting company in the world right now, and they keep growing. They're opening up data centers all over the place, so they're worldwide at this point. So no matter where you are, you can use Linode. If you guys check out the link in the description tab below, there's a $20 discount. Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the top four programming languages to learn in 2020. And it really covers all bases of programming, so that's why I drilled it down just to these top four. It's, it's really geared towards beginners that are trying to get into different areas of uh, the programming sphere. So I'm going to jump right in. Number four on this list is going to go to Dart slash Flutter. So Dart is the programming language behind Google's Flutter framework. And Flutter is actually built for mobile apps initially. But in addition to that, it's actually now being used for uh, web-based applications as well. So you can use uh, Dart, which is the markup language that you use to create your mobile apps and the Flutter frame framework for, um, you know, specifically, like I said, for mobile apps initially, but then now it's actually moved into just actual web-based applications as well. So with this technology set, you can build mobile apps, but you can also build web applications, which is why I have it in this list. Now, the thing about mobile apps is that I've actually done mobile application development with the uh, you know, Android library, the SDK, using Java, Eclipse, and, and other tools that are out there. But there's nothing easier to get started with than using Flutter. So it's definitely the best product, I think, when it comes to mobile app development, just because of ease of use. Mobile app development is not easy at all. It's, it's actually, I would say, much more difficult than web-based programming. But Flutter actually allows you to get set up on your phone. So if you want to just test right directly with your iOS um, phone, or your, uh, yeah, your uh, Apple phone or your Android phone, then the, um, the process is just so much easier with Flutter. So that's why it's number four on this list. So the next one is going to be C Sharp. Now, C Sharp is number three because of .NET Core. .NET Core is the runtime that C Sharp uses in order to build apps either on your, um, you know, for websites, for database development, for video games. There's a lot of different things that you can do with C Sharp, and it's not just catered towards one specific thing. The reason why C Sharp, I think, should be mentioned over something like Java is simply for game development. So if somebody's looking to get into game development, then I definitely recommend C Sharp just because of the Unity framework. Game development also is not easy at all. It's going to take you a long time to get up to speed. But Unity, of all products out there, is going to be probably the easiest to actually build a working game that you could actually sell one day once you get good enough. And although you can use other languages with Unity, C Sharp is the primary language that most people use. So when you're looking for documentation about how to do this or that, then it's mostly going to be in C Sharp. But in addition to that, C Sharp is also used across corporate for Fortune 500. So if you're looking to actually get a job, then C Sharp is a good skill to have. The downside is that C Sharp is massive. The .NET library is, uh, is even more massive. And it's going to take you quite a bit of time, I think, to get up to speed in C Sharp compared to easier languages that are out there, um, like the next one that we're going to mention. So number two is going to go to Python. Now, Python dominates the, uh, at least as far as jobs are concerned, it dominates because of something called data science or machine learning, artificial intelligence. That has been an industry that has been exploding over the past probably five years or so. And Python leads the pack. So there's all types of different machine learning libraries that you can get into, things like TensorFlow. Uh, but I found that, that PyTorch is probably the easiest way to get started with machine learning. So while Python might be more dedicated to machine learning these days, you can actually get started with machine learning relatively easy using something like PyTorch. But even if you didn't want to do machine learning, Python is an all-around great programming language just for system administration, for basic level games. 
although you wouldn't wouldn't really want to use it for games i think c sharp is a better option there but python essentially covers most areas of development i would say besides games and mobile development so there is the python kiwi project that allows you to build mobile apps but it doesn't work very well from what i've seen uh, and what i've tried in the past but that said python is one of the easiest languages to just get started with and it teaches you i think good form and good programming one of the best things about python is that python always has this one you know pythonic way of doing something versus other languages where there's so many different ways of achieving the same thing now even with python you can do multiple ways of achieving the same thing but like i said with python the, the community has more of a pythonic type standard if something is like the de facto gold standard of doing something it's considered the the pythonic way and it's easy to find those sorts of answers when you're looking on stack overflow or github or something like that so python just uh you know for beginner programmers out there it's it's really one of the best i think to get started with all right now number one is going to go to javascript and this could also be extended to typescript but i think you should learn javascript before you start jumping into typescript and because typescript is really just javascript it's a higher level javascript then I, I, if you have the basic JavaScript knowledge, even if you're not a, a TypeScript expert, you could probably work your way around the TypeScript code base and sort of understand what's going on uh, and be able to hack around it. So we're seeing a lot of JavaScript-based projects moving over to TypeScript because it's better for larger uh, organizations and it's better because it has type checking and it saves you from making a lot of errors that are going to come up when you're developing. But JavaScript... The best reason I think to jump into it is number one, th there's just a ton of jobs in JavaScript and everything that is built off of JavaScript, things like React or Angular or Vue, it's all just JavaScript code. So there's many jobs in all three of those client side frameworks. But in addition to that, you could also do basic video game development with JavaScript using something called WebGL. There's now WebAssembly, which is going to be a new. Uh, emerging technology that, that's hitting development right now. But the problem with uh, WebAssembly, I would say, is that simply it, it's just not there yet. So I don't think it's like something that people should be focusing a ton of attention on because a lot of the documentation is, is out of date almost as soon as it comes out. And because it's such a moving target, it keeps changing quite a bit. But when it comes to JavaScript, one of the best things about it is simply that you can just open up a browser and then that's all you need. You don't need any sort of development environment or anything like that. Like if you have a Chrome browser, you can actually just start writing your JavaScript code right into this console right here. So little things like um, just, you know, hello to the screen is something you can type right in. You don't have to install any tools for it except for a browser. And really that makes it one of the best languages to start with. Now, even though JavaScript isn't the best language, it was developed over a period of 10 days initially. It's made a lot of uh, progress, but the problem with JavaScript is there's so many different build tools and there's so many different libraries and frameworks. And then you have things like Node.js, which is actually a runtime that JavaScript is, uh, is used to develop on um, you know, for the Node uh, runtime. But all that said, if you spend some time with JavaScript, there's so many different areas and avenues of web development that use JavaScript. It, it's really imperative that you know that if you're going to be a web developer, and now that the browsers are getting much better capabilities for rendering 3D applications or games and virtual reality, augmented reality, the browser is starting to have that, that capability. And obviously, most businesses run on the web now. So with JavaScript, you, you can't really go wrong. It's definitely number one on my list here. All right, so basically, if you are going to be doing any sort of development, which one do you choose? And and like I said, it's it's going to be all about if you want to build mobile apps, use Dart. If you want to build stuff that is going to be like video games or more than that, you want to get a, cor a corporate Fortune 500 job, then use C Sharp and, and start spending your time there. If you want to be an all-around programmer that learns good skills and, and has um, the ability to build web applications or data scraping, Python is a great option there. And obviously for machine learning, artificial intelligence, anything that you want to incorporate that into, then then Python is the, is the best option there. And then finally, for any sort of web-based development, JavaScript is going to be your go-to. So I have it number one just because of uh, the opportunity, the ease of use, uh, or the ease of entry, really, for beginner developers that are looking to get into code. 
and also the fact that you don't have to have anything but a browser in order to actually start writing JavaScript. All right, guys, so that's my list. Let me know what you guys think. I know that there's plenty of other languages out there that are still relevant. And, um, you know, we could have done a top 10, but I just think that a drill, you know, we dr if we drill down to the top four, it just saves you guys time and saves me time as well. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.